Okay, you're welcome back to the show. So I want to turn to the news, which Colin Bonner, the Tipperary manager, described as a complete shock. And we're talking about the retirement of Porg Maher. Still not quite 33 years of age, 13 seasons with Tipperary, has started every single championship game since 2009. He's a triple All-Ireland winner. He has six Munster medals. He was an All-Star winner on six occasions, seven county titles, Thurlis Sarsfields. And if we're keeping count of everything, three All-Irelands across minor and under-21 level as well. So one of the really uh, great players in the history of the game, and he's with us now. Uh, Por, great to have you on. Thanks a million for the time. How about her, Joe? How are you? Yeah, very well. Are you Pawdy or Porig, or what's, what am I calling you? Uh, Asher, I suppose it's, it's easy going to Pawdy, I suppose. I don't really okay. mind, not Venice. Okay, Pawdy it is. So, Pawdy, a lot of people uh, a couple of weeks back would have been watching you, or a couple of months back, maybe two months ago, would have been watching you in the club county semi-final, an exceptional performance, and they would have said, geez, there's still plenty of life in this fella yet. So this announcement, like Colin Bonner says, is a complete shock to us. Can't be uh, far behind for you when it comes to the shock value. What's what's after happening? Yeah, Joe, so I suppose uh, that game, you mentioned it, the county semi-final, um, played that, we managed to win it, and I felt great playing it, uh, to be honest with you. And there was a two-week two week break then till the county final and uh, obviously we trained away the, that following week with the club and we trained hard and um, it was the following yeah the following Monday then which would be the week of the county final I just didn't start feeling great I suppose in my neck and I was getting a few headaches and stuff so um, at the time the COVID was getting rife I was like oh no I'm after catching the COVID now the week of the game and I didn't know what to make but thankfully it wasn't COVID anyway but, um, but yeah and then uh, I took it easy that week. Uh, played the county final. Uh, didn't feel great playing. I didn't feel. I felt worse after it. Um, and then that match was a draw. So with two weeks again to the replay. So I just said, like, I'm going to take it, rest up now, um, and look after myself. And and what were what were the symptoms, uh, Paddy? When you say between the semi final and the final, you didn't feel great. In what way? Yeah, to just my neck started get my neck area started feet getting sore, and I knew just you know, it wasn't it wasn't right. Like you know, I was getting tightened up, and then I was getting headaches as well. Right, you're probably almost so, thinking it was like a neck spasm or something. Were you? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I thought maybe a tight muscle or you know that kind of way or something. But um, yeah. But yeah, the, played the replay, the county final, felt back poor again. And then we obviously got beaten and I just said, right, go take it handy now for a few weeks, spoke with the doctor. He said, just take it handy, rest up. Um, and did, I didn't feel as bad. Now I get a headache and that here and there, but didn't feel as bad. And then I got an extended break by Colin Bonner. And then um, I was coming back next, last, I was due to go back Tuesday night training. So there about two weeks ago, the doctor said, look, we'll, we'll, we'll get, we'll get your scans and stuff just to make sure everything's okay. Um, and we can we can tear back into the train and, and I suppose luckily and unluckily I, I I went and got the scans done and they showed up something that the the doctors weren't happy with in my neck so um met an expert uh, I suppose expert chair on Friday and he more or less gave me the news that look if I was to continue I'd be putting myself at great risk um going forward that the damage could get a lot worse you know if I get a shoulder the wrong way or my neck flips back the wrong way or whichever so um. Yeah, when he explained it to me in, in, in detail that on Friday afternoon, I think the decision was black and white for me then. And um, yeah, a bit of a shock, all right. But sure, um, I looked as, as uh, I've had a decent career all the same. I can't complain too much. God, that is out of nowhere. Your head yeah. must have been all over the place when he's spelling this out to you, saying it's over. Are you, are you telling me I'm done here? Like, you can't, I, 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 this can't be happening. Yeah, it was. Um, I probably suppose left, I think I'd say he left his office in a kind of a in a in a fog, and I probably didn't ask half enough of the questions that you know. It was actually only Sunday and Monday that I kind of realised, geez, I need to get in contact and, and find out more because I kind of left in a bit of shock, sure, like as you would like. But um, will they, will they say what they say when people get bad diagnoses? You know, if they hear a certain illness, they don't take in very much after that word is spoken. So I, I can imagine you, you walked out of there in a daze, all right. And you, it's probably a day later you're thinking, hang on, what exactly is happening here? Yeah, exactly. That's it. Like, and, and look, I, I, I spoke with immediate family and stuff over the weekend and look, everyone was kind of on the same opinion. Um, you know, your health is most important and going forward. And I just said, I'm 32 now and I have a lot going on in my life. So um, look, the doctor said you walked in a fit 32 year old, obviously this small issue, but he says, 
you want to be able to continue on and, and enjoy your life and be and look he said you'll be perfectly healthy going forward once you take the risk of of this away from it and look that's i was left to no option really then so it's the risk of contact effectively of exactly yeah. your yeah. neck going unexpectedly in a certain direction it can yeah it can be a neck but it even sure like you could get a shoulder in a game or you know into the front or the back right and, and your neck could go a different direction or you know it can easily so happen like and uh he said, look, Hurling obviously is, is massively physical game. So he said, like, you know, even, you know, that Atten could Atten could set it off, you know, that kind of way. So um, look, I was left with no, I was left with no choice really. And um, I even put the question to him, if I gave up inter county, could I continue the club a bit? And he said, Well, you're 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 doing the same, it's the exact same activities. So unfortunately, that's the way it finished. But um, well, look, in a way, I'm kind of I'm kind of uh, very lucky that this was all picked up when it was. I could come back in train and choose the night tonight again. You know, being involved in the league and one one bang could have uh, done a lot of damage for me. So, and like Potty was paralysis uh, potentially, or is it that serious? That black and white. He he went well. If you if if you left, like how many times he said, do you want to get, you know, keep getting hit before the you know it really gets bad? Like you know, and you know, it was it was the way he put it to me that you know you you walked in your thirty two years of age. Do you want your girlfriend to be picking you up in a few years time off the couch and and bringing you to bed just kind of way, you know, but look, a doctor was always going to go to the most extremist, you know, because to do with the neck and the head and in fairness, to do with the neck and the head is serious. So they were taking no risks. And look, I spoke to three or four doctors and they were all the same opinion. So, um, yeah, look, it's disappointing, but um, okay. to be worse, to be worse if I was 22, Joe. No, that's true. That is true. And there was no party, I presume, that had that streak of madness to say another season or two, I'll take my chances. Yeah, well, look, no, and I suppose there's so many people telling me what what the best decision is, and look, I'll be very close with my with the two doctors. I was from around home here as well, and um, look, they were very honest and straight up with me. You know, I've worked with them for several years now through the club and the county, and they told me straight up, look, it'll be it's the best decision. You'll be a hundred percent kind of wrong to go to against it, and yeah, that was kind of it. Like, and you know. And in fairness, the doctors won't be able to see me, can't stand over me walking out into Hurling Field or going up training, you know, and looking at me togged out when the risk is there. So looked was the best decision all around, I think. Yeah, no, they couldn't in good conscience. And Paddy, across the last decade or so, at top level elite sport, would you have had problems with your neck traditionally or was this an area of ongoing concern? No, it wouldn't have been. And I can't recall that in major either anyway, you know, um, no, I had no real issues, thank God, in that area. So, um, look, I still have to meet one or two um, specialists in relation to it, you know, and just go over certain things. And I suppose they're going to probably give me a lot more answers as in how old this injury is. Is it like, is it did, did this happen over a period of time, but the symptoms just showing up, you know, at the end of last year, or was it just a new injury? So, um, look, it'd be nice to know all that, but at the end of the day, the main decision is made now. And as I said, once I take the risk of the physicality out of it, um, I'll hopefully have a, a perfect, uh, healthy life. Yeah, well, that is the main thing, by a distance. And you don't remember any particular knock in training across those two weeks? No, and the doctors are obviously asking the same thing. I can't recall one major incident where I said, Jesus, that's after, that's after knocking me back or you know, that kind of way. But, um, but, you know, training's gone so physical now, you know, conditioning games and things like that that you're you're getting several hits at night training so um look it's probably just it's probably a very freak accident in a way and very unlucky but um but look as i said i can't complain too much i, I had a good time of it what's been your overriding emotion over the last few days yes yeah, honestly still coming to terms to be honest with you um look i know spring chicken i'm 33 next week um you know but you know i felt good apart from that you know i felt very fit um up to that, uh, you know, I said I was I definitely had another year in me with, with Inter County and I was going to see how that go that went. Um and obviously then usually when a player gets to retire from Inter County, he usually gives two or three years back to his club when he's when he's in in, in some way good shape. And uh you know I was looking forward to that as well. And unfortunately that's that's more or less gone as well now. So um that's probably the bitter swill pill to swallow really. You know, look I had 13 seasons with Tip, thoroughly enjoyed him. Um I kind of get over the, the next year or two with that, but it's just a couple of years at the club is, is a bit of a killer, all right. This is some void to arrive into your life unexpectedly, isn't it? I mean, 
I would guess, just like any other intercounty player, we're talking three, four, five nights a week and probably plenty of thinking time as well and conversations and your identity is wrapped up in it. And for that to have the rug pulled from underneath so quickly is a shock to the system. So this is a big void to fill over the next weeks and months ahead. I'm sure you're, that's crossed your mind once or twice. Yeah, it is, I suppose. As you said there, you said it all really that, you know, you're, you're always thinking about, you know, tonight now the boys are going training the pitch. You know, you're, that would be on your mind all day. You're looking forward to a league game on Saturday there to start National League. There's always something there. Your mind is always constantly revolved around the hurling, you know, and, uh, you know, what you're putting into your body as regards nutrition and you're constantly on the go. Like, and now that's kind of all kind of even relaxed for me. Um, it's going to be a lot, big, bit, bit of a change because ever since I, I joined the Tipperary Miners as a 17-year-old, I've been constantly involved in it. So, um yeah, look, it's going to be a bit of a change to take a bit of getting used to. But um, look, there's a lot of people. I've been getting great support and fairness. And, you know, the GPA have even been on to me for any support that I need is there. And, you know, it's great. Like, you know, and, um, you know, there's great camaraderie there. But yeah, it'll be a big void. And I'll just have to concentrate now on getting the golf handicap down a bit, I think, Joe. <laughs> I suspect you might have the hand coordination to be a decent golfer somehow. <laughs> uh, your teammates must have been taken aback almost. Is this some kind of weird joke or something i mean like do you, did you tell them in person or you stick it into whatsapp group I, i'd say you I mean you haven't been able to speak to all them in person obviously no and it happened so quickly then and when i kind of had a definite answer of what i was going to be doing um i just kind of said to, uh, i said to a few of my my family that look i want to get this out there as quick as possible because my own head was was a bit frazzled all weekend i was just kind of way down a bit with the with, with everything so i said i just want to get it out there and we try and move on and obviously then the lads are starting the National League on Saturday. So I didn't want to be getting in the way of, of um, you know, of them either and their preparation. So I just wanted to get it out there and we'll all move on. And uh, yeah, thankfully, I, to be honest with you, I felt a bit of relief when I got it out on the Tuesday and uh, we just moved on. And um, But yeah, I only, I only met one or two of the lads last or over the weekend and I just explained to them the story and they did get a bit of a land all right. Yeah. Um, and then I just man, managed to get a message into the lads in the WhatsApp group before it broke. Um, just to explain everything and uh look I'll, I'll bump into them over 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 the year and for coffee and whatever like you know but um yeah look it's probably a bit of a str- strange because they probably said i'm a big liar because i met a few of them a week before and i said i can't wait to go back next tuesday night yeah. and then the whole thing turned upside down so but look that's it that's life and that's sport and uh um with plenty of memories anyway yeah uh, you're either taking this incredibly well or you're still in shock i'm not sure which i have a feeling you might still be in shock somehow because you're taking it very well yeah, you know, I look to be honest with you, it'll take a bit of time to settle in, all right. Um, yeah, but again, look, I just, I suppose, trying to think positive on it is, um, yeah. I'm very lucky that I had 13 great years of tip. Like, you know, as I said, if, if, if it happens at 22 or three year old at the point at the start of your career, then you'd say you'd be, you'd be fairly devastated. Like, um, but look, it, it is heartbreaking to finish like this, but um, look, I can't complain. I, I got my chance at it and... Uh, while a lot of other lads couldn't have got the opportunity, I got mine. So um, I'm very grateful for that as well. Were there any messages that resonated with you? Uh, well, to be honest with you, it was, it was overwhelming, really, the messages I was getting, the message support, you know, through the fo- WhatsApp, text messages, phone calls, you know, even social media. It has been unbelievable. Like, and um, and I suppose the one that hits you is, is is the people from other counties, really, you know, that you know that you might have thought would have been, would have been burning you above the stands, you know, every summer. But... In fairness, you know, t- you know, opponents there from the, all the different counties that we'd have played against year in year out, you know, getting messages of support and whatever, and off them, you know, it's 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 really overwhelming. But um, it is nice as well, you know. I suppose, um, you know, it is uh, it is nice when other team when your when your opponents are are giving you a bit of, you know, the, the congratulations and whatever yeah. it is. So um, yeah, look, it's it's great, and that's that's the GA community, like, isn't it? No, hundred percent, and I've no doubt in. 10, 15 years time, there'll be golf classics with the Kilkenny and Tipperary hurlers and, you know, that kind of relationship. I wouldn't dare ask you to reveal what was in any of the messages, but what kind of opponents, for instance, dropped you a line? Um, like, if, like as you mentioned there, Kilkenny, a couple of Kilkenny boys would have sent messages. Um, I got a few off the Limerick lads that I played over the years. Um, you know, even let some, of the, some of the lads and the footballers from, from other counties that I wouldn't have obviously came across in the pitch, but who would have met in various events and the All-Stars and things like that, you know, 
you know, it, it's the kind of messages from them kind of people, I suppose, that have been through it all themselves and mm. and, and they know the inside ins and outs of, of uh, inter-county players' life, you know. So, um, yeah, look, they were nice touching messages, to be fair. Yeah, no, it's great people take the time to reach out to someone, get your number and drop you a line because they know they know how difficult it is and, and surreal. Yeah. I mean, especially when it happens for you so quickly and unexpectedly, it's different, you know, a 36, 37-year-old can see the end coming. You've been blindsided by it, which must be... Um, very strange experience. So what, usually when you do, do these retirement careers, we get people to reflect in their career. You're probably, them, you know, maybe not quite ready to have those kind of conversations, but you must uh, look back with a huge degree of pride. I mean, across 13 seasons to have started every championship game since 09, three All-Irelands, the Munster titles, to be an All-Star on six occasions. Uh, that's a fairly extraordinary haul. Uh, do you retire I'm sure you're getting used to that that sentence. Do you retire with um, a lot of satisfaction and, and, a, and a sense of a job well done? Uh, I suppose when you look back and it, yeah, it is, I've been lucky enough, I suppose, to manage to win an Ireland medal, which is, I suppose, what it's all about really at the end of the day at inter-county level. But um, I look, I suppose, the, the, the real the competitive, you know, person inside of me and, and the greedy player, <laughs> it probably wanted one or two more, you know, that kind of way. You'd go back over the years, we lost finals to Kilkenny or whatever, and you'd say, geez, we could have snuck that one or that one, just pity. But I look when the, when the dust settles down and I get a chance to reflect properly, I, I can't be too, I can't complain too much for uh the career I've had, to be fair. Yeah. Anytime I've ever seen you interviewed, you seem like a fairly even tempered guy and like working in the Gardaí, I'm sure you have a good sense of the world beyond sport and a good perspective. So you never struck me as someone who was like swallowed up by the obsessive, you know, nature that some people can approach their sport with. Have I, have I read you wrong there or did you always have it in a, in a healthy box? Uh, to be honest with you, I suppose from when I started up to maybe I was in my twenties, I probably would have been all consumed with it. Um, you know, as regards, you know, everything revolved around the hurling, you know, if I was working and the job didn't suit me or my training, I, I nearly give up the job and, I go without a job until I got one that suited me. Do you know that kind of way? Right. Okay. Um, but then, as you said there, you know, I joined the guards then um, during my mid twenties, and uh, I suppose got a bit of perspective in life and seen other things. And obviously, as you get older, you get a bit of perspective as well, and you you, you kind of see what's really important. And um, no different to the last few days, and you, when I understand, mm. you know, what's important, and uh, look at the end of the day, the sport is there to be enjoyed, and while you have to take it serious. Um, I suppose now I understand that it's not to be all in and all. And would you say you enjoyed that first half or that second half of your career more? Um, I suppose the first year or two I enjoyed it because I didn't take it as, you know, as I, as I said, I was enjoying I was only a younger lad. I wasn't, yeah. I had no chip in my shoulder. But as you get older then, you, you kind of take more, you know, you take the criticism on board, you take, you take the plaudits on board. Everything is kind of, you know, your mind is constantly racing and, and as you get older then you're probably experience you get the experience with it and yeah probably the second half of your career is probably a bit more like yeah i enjoyed it i i, I you know if someone said something about you you wouldn't take any notice good or bad you know mm. you just move on and and uh, that comes just the experience of and, and going through the ups and downs really yeah because actually tipperary take a fair bit of fact don't they like, certain, certain certain counties get a kick in, and uh even despite your three all irelands uh within the county there'd be criticism and even outside the county there'd be well, they can't follow up success with success kind of a narrative. So I'd say you've turned off the radio in anger a few times. Uh, look, again, I suppose it can't be, we, you weren't trying to listen too much, but yeah, look, I suppose Tiberi supporters are, are, are very um, demanding in that, you know, they always expect to be, you know, there, thereabouts every year, which is fine because like, I suppose they have been a successful county over the years, um, you know, if you go to the role of honour and that. But um, yeah, look, I suppose, we, as I always said in interviews before and asked that, like, we're, we're very demanding of ourselves as players as well in Tipperary. So, um, look, if things aren't working out for us, we'd always be trying to figure out why. And, you know, so I suppose we're no different to, we're no different to the rest yeah. of the people involved, you know. Look, you can be calling them rubbish and all sorts of names from the stands now. It's easy out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I sit back and just watch it quietly now, I'd say. <laughs> What's your man Ronan at? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, in training, I'd, I'd say, you know, such you're up against such quality forwards and you know 
Eamon O'Shea pulling the strings and like God, when 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 Tipperary were moving, they were really a joy to watch and played some just phenomenal hurling. Uh, who was that uh, regular opponent in training that you saw jogging towards you for the training matches and you thought, oh geez, here we go again? Yeah, um, as you said, there I suppose we were kind of blessed in Tipperary over the years with with, with forwards, you know. Um earlier on in my career, it was the likes of, you know, Owen Kelly, um Larry Corbett, my own club mate, you know, were were the main men and like they were going to give you a great education, I mean, that's for sure, in the, in the training pitch. And uh, it, was, it was very seldom that you're going to meet a player across the year that were going to be as good, if not better, than them lads. So um, yeah. that was a great education. And obviously then you can join the few magicians then that have came since, like Shamie Cannon, you know, Bubbles has been around there, you know. So, um, you know, some of the forwards you had, Jason Ford, John McGrath, the list goes on, like, you know, you're getting tested every which way. And just, <laughs> And uh, look, I suppose for us, at the, every night training, it was difficult, but I suppose for us going out with backs and championship games, then you're telling you think to yourself, well, I'm well tuned up here and there. It's, so it's, we it's, have, so. it's some way to get tuned up. It really is. I mean, that is a that is a proper education as a fella in his early 20s, Devon Kelly jogging towards him with a smile, you know? Uh, unless you get pace in the training, and then the conference is logged into the championship <laughs> game. But uh, I know exactly, look, we had we were, we were blessed with the, with the talent we had in fairness. What about opponents then? Who were the opponents that you you felt? God, that was a really good proper scrap. Yeah, I suppose. Um, I was asked that question during the week as well, and like I started out marking likes of Henry Shefflin, like you know, and was that uh, in the first? Was that in, so? You came on the scene, the 09 final, which is one of the great. You know, I know it's ultimately ended in a bad way for Tipperary, but came back and won in ten, so maybe it's not as painful, but. 09 is one of the great finals for obvious reasons. Is that where Henry sought you out as the young lad? Yeah, I would have actually marked him in the league. We put him in the league final that year in Turles and it went extra time. It was a cracking game, but um, I managed to do okay in him that day. And I was actually centre back that day and he was centre forward. And then the All Ireland final, I was full back. And lo and behold, we went to positions anyway. And I think Henry was named at wing forward or something. And before the ball's training here, Henry dropped trots in it on full forward. <laughs> and I was like, Jesus. And uh, I think I was lucky enough. We went out, we went to the ball early on. I went out in front to ball, let the ball underneath my legs. And shit, Henry was inside with the ball one moment with Brendan Cummins and he pulled it. And in fairness, Brendan <laughs> Cummins got touching it. So it could have been a very messy start. But yeah, I know you're just getting like, you know, the likes of him coming in top of you. You know, oh, at 20, 20 years of age, you watched them all your life, you know, growing up. Um, it's a fair education, you know, to be fair. Be- because they were they were pretty ruthless at picking out who they might think could be the weak link and putting, you know, a Henry onto them. And let's let's see what happens. So, I mean, that had the potential to be a day where all of Tipperary is driving home saying, geez, your man Maher got killed today. That's why we lost it. So I'm sure all those things run through your mind as a 20-year-old when, when Shefflin's jogging in. Yeah, lucky enough. Yeah, but maybe the fact that I was 20 maybe helped, helped the situation. Maybe. I was, yeah. and, and I wasn't, I didn't have experienced too many, you know, I suppose bad bad experiences, I suppose, at that stage. But um, yeah, look, the carefree attitude probably helped me at that stage, you know. Yeah. And, and what, without getting too into it, like Shefflin's a genius, obviously, what was your kind of method in trying to mark him? Like you mentioned being out in front for an early ball. Would you, would you try and be out in front of him? Would you always have half a hold on his jersey and, and, and be sticking to him like glue? Would you stand off him a little bit in certain instances? How do, how do you approach someone like a Shefflin? Yeah, well, I suppose I, I was talking to one of the around. The game was a lot different back then, as in it was, it was kind of more you're, you stick to your position and you fight with your man for the ball, whether it comes in low or high. Whereas we're now obviously there's a bit there's a lot more you know movement and tactics involved in hurling now. But um, yeah, I suppose you're you're always in the back of your mind when you're marking the likes of him, like uh, Joe Canning, someone that you know you can't you know oversell yourself in certain situations because these lads will punish you, you know, um, very easily. So um, I suppose you have to play it a bit cuter and be able to read the game a bit, a bit qu- better and quicker um, when you're marking the likes of them. And I had I've had to do it plenty of times over the years, you know, between Henry. You know, like said Joe, TJ Reid, you know, Hoggy Blow and Cork, like those those list is endless of the players you had to you had to take on and yeah, I suppose, you know, uh, grateful to have to share the field with a lot of them too, obviously. Yeah. Who gave you your toughest day? Which day would you because I just remember you being brilliant all the time. So I mean I'm sure <laughs> like to be honest, I'm sure a lot of people just have a memory of you being a solid eight to nine or ten out of ten kind of player. Uh, what DVD would you not like me to dig out and have a, a look at? Who gave you a tough day? 
Geez, just to think now it is hard to wear. Uh, Nobody. Pick up. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, would have, I would actually, the following year, 2010, we actually won, but the, the first match was against Cork below and Parky Cleave in the Munster Championship. And uh, I was full back and Isaacio Halpine came in full forward. Now, Isaacio was the same height as Satanta and, and, and the rest of him, like he was massive, but he gave me a tower day that day. And that was a fair education, you know, in fairness, but we, we got bet well that day. We were bet by 10 points. Um, Thankfully, we regrouped and managed to win all Ireland after. But um, that day probably stands out as a day that I wouldn't like to watch back now, to be honest with you. Right, OK, I'll dig out that then. I, I, uh, I wonder how many people have mentioned to you the hit on Joe Canning in the last few days. Probably a few hundred, maybe. So <laughs> I feel sorry for Canning there. I mean, it, it was lined up a long way and you came from a long way and it was a perfectly fair shoulder. But uh, well, that's, that's the game, I suppose. You're not going to turn down that opportunity. Yeah, no, as I said, I was probably gone, I was probably gone far enough that I couldn't put up. I had to stay going, or else I would have been fixed on it. So uh but yeah, no, it is in fairness, um that was a big hit. And I the, the tables turned the following year actually when uh, we played Galway in the same match. I sure Grove McInerney came out and met me and drove me into the ground. Sure, the Galway scores. Well, I love that one, especially after what happened the year before. Which is kind of like ironic now. Did- just kind of ironic now that I'm retiring with a neck injury after all this. <laughs> Do you know, it's it's funny when, when we were talking at the start of the conversation and you were talking about the, I suppose, guarding against Whiplash sort of happening again. It's exactly the hit that you put in on, on Joe Canning that if, if someone did that to you, that's what your doctor is saying. We can't have that. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you know, and that's the, look, the game, the game has gone very physical. There's a lot of rocks involved now, the way, mm. you know, especially in the middle third of the pitch. So, um, yeah. Just exactly that was a that's a perfect example of not not to be doing anyway. In the couple of days before a, a big match, say against a Canning, for instance, or a TJ Reed, would you be one for digging out footage and watching tape on them? And he likes to turn onto his left that way, and he likes that jink, and oh, I've seen that jink before, and I'll be ready for that. Or did you? I I don't want to be obsessing about it. Someone else, I'll just worry about it on the day. What was your approach? Um, well, I like watching games anyway, Joe. So, like you know, even you know, I'd record any match, football or hurling that's on the television. I like to to watch it back. You know, as you said, there it might pick up something on the possible opponent or you might be playing the following week or the week after. Um, even watching the football games, you say I might get something off a defender here that he's doing that I could bring into the hurling side of things. But um, yeah, no, I would I would like to watch over games or you know, if you were playing Kilkenny or or a Galway next week, that you know you you watch a game back just to see what way they're playing and their style of play and the lad you might be marking might be doing this. Yes. You want to keep an eye on. So um, I think a lot of players like that now anyway, the way video analysis has gone, but um, look, I enjoy games anyway, watching them. So it was no, it was no burden way back to, to, to watch it anyway. Would that stuff come in useful? Would you find it would help on the day then that a nugget you picked up from tape? Because people often say with visualization, they really enjoy it and they, they find stuff they have visualized really does come to fruition on the day. Did you find watching tape would correspond to what might happen a few days later? Yeah, I suppose that you, you, you might get 1% confidence out of it. Like, and that's a lot in, in, in hurling, like, you know, and um, I just always felt comfortable. And it, look, the way I said it, the way I talk about it is it's another box ticked in a match week. And it just gives you that bit more of a, you know, I've watched my opponents now. I've, 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 I've seen what they maybe might be up to. Um, I was never, I could never, I was never too strong in the visualization myself with, say, lying off in a couch or in bed. I found it very hard to concentrate on it, but I suppose this is my kind of way of, you know, visually watching something that might stick in your mind. And as I said, if it was only 1% it was going to help me the weekend. Yeah. Of 2010, 2016 or 2019, is there a particular favourite All-Ireland in there? Is one sweeter than the other for any particular reason? They all have different meanings, to be honest with you. Um, obviously, the first one is your first one, so you're never going to, you know, that's always going to be special. Hmm. We left it. We, we left it a few years then before we won the second one. Um, you know, and I suppose we won the second one through the front door, winning the monster final. So that was kind of nice. Um, and then I suppose to win one at the back end of your career then is, is it was also nice as well. Hmm. Look, it's hard to pick out. It's hard to pick out one to be honest yeah. with you. Um, they're all good. They're all yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that must have been great for you though in nineteen. Sheedy coming back you know, okay, we're, we're in a good spot again because I always felt for your Tipperary generation on the outside that two All-Irelands would have been a, 
a big enough underachievement for the talent there. You know, okay, you win one, you get the second grand. I feel like three really rubber stamps a great team. You can say, well, that's a great batch. I don't know if you were thinking that way around 2019, but for me, I thought, ah, that CV feels a lot more complete. It's amazing what one extra one can do. I don't know if you see it in those terms at all or think about it in that way at all. Yeah, no, I suppose, yeah, you'd be trying to be as successful. Like, like and again, being greedy, four, four sounds nicer as well, like, you know, so. <laughs> but, you know, look, we came, we came up against, you know, fantastic teams over the years. You know, obviously, the Kilkenny one stands out. Yeah. We, had a great, we had a great little rivalry at Galway there through the years as well. Um, you know, there's only pocket of balls separating us there in three years in a row. Um, you know, and then obviously um, Limerick have come to the fore in the last number of years. So yeah, we've, we've played against some very good teams as well. You know, so you can't be too greedy either. No, no, you can't. Um, three is definitely a lot better than two, but I appreciate four and five would have been nice as well. It was a great era. Yeah, I mean, how do you? I mean, in your head, the Kilkenny team are they still the best? You know, that 09, 010 period versus you've seen this brilliant Limerick team now and Galway in the midst. I mean. How do you rank or separate them, or is it impossible to do that? I suppose they're, di- they're different. I think they're different styles. Um, you know, different times in hurling. Like when I started out, whenever it was back in two thousand nine, the game has changed a lot since then. Like you know, and um, it's a lot more tactical now, a lot more kind of structure. You know, it's, it's short passing games, kind of. Whereas back then, it was. You know, it was high intensity, lashing the ball up down the field and made the best man win kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, but in fairness, look, the Kilkenny team were unbelievable you know, all over the pitch. Like, even they could bring him off the bench as well. Like, it was, you know, if you see seen off one lad, you have another lad coming off the sideline that's probably as good. Like, you know, so they will stand out as probably one of the greatest teams. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do you prefer the modern day style as opposed to 09 when it was just ball after ball landing in the top of you and Shefflin in 09? Uh, when as a back man, I probably for the 09 times because the ball was just being as his head hit up and down the field, there was no real pin pine passing. Whereas now, you know, you take I even played in full back line last year and you could be marking a, a nifty forward there, and the ball has been pin pinted into space to him, and it won't be delivered until he's ready or he makes the right run. Like, you know, so the game yeah. has changed, but look, different challenges we all had to change with it. So, like, you know, I enjoyed, I enjoyed the challenge of recent times as much as the challenge of standing toe to toe with a lad back in 10 years ago you know so mm. look it was, it was all it was all enjoyable and you had to adapt at different times but look I suppose that's what, that, that's what, that was what the game needed it does strike me as very challenging now for a defender in that as you said the ball's not going to be delivered to your man say in the full forward line until he's ready and he likes the angles of things and he makes the run and it's into space and it's precision and you don't really get a sniff there if a ball's fired in from 25 metres whereas I'm sure there, there are times in 09 where you feel like you're, whatever the dynamics of where, say, a Shefflin or someone is next to you, you kind of feel like, yeah, go on, launch that in because I'm actually in a better position here. And they're not spotting that from 60 meters away. And so you win the ball and you look great and you come out and you've beaten Shefflin to it. Whereas you could you could probably go 10, 15 minutes almost without getting even a, a hand on, on the ball or your man these days when it's fired into him so well. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, you could be like, we'll take their... Last year I was playing full back, but like you could be inside in the hole, you could have 40 yards all around you, just yourself and a full forward, and everyone else to count the field. And you know, they're working hard or getting the ball and it's to be delivered in pinpointed into space. Like no matter how fast or how slow you are, or you know, you have to be if you're not able to get a read that ball quicker to forward, like it's kind of damage limitation then after that, isn't it? Like, yeah. Um, you know, so you're kind of relying on your your teammates out the field to put enough pressure on to let, let the ball at least if it comes in if it comes in 60 40 at least it's giving yourself a chance yes do you yeah. know but um the days look, of 50 50 balls are gone yeah well that just goes i suppose shows how good them kilkenny lads were back 10 years ago too that you know no matter what way it came they were able to win it and and, and do damage like you know so yeah look the game has changed a lot and to be interesting now in 10 years time is it going to swing back the other way again you just don't know like yeah well, listen, you were uh, an amazing part of some great teams as well. And I think a lot of people will remember your Tipperary teams at their best uh, with a lot of fondness because there were some amazing performances in there as well. I, congratulations on a, a genuinely a phenomenal career, like a really phenomenal career. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure, like everyone, very sorry that it's ended so suddenly in the way it has, but at least there were a lot of good times in there as well. So, uh, Paddy Maher, best of luck with retirement over the next couple of weeks and months. And sure, we might chat to you again. Thanks so much for the time. 
Cheers, Joe. Thank you.